Bye. Hello. <laughs> Hi. Hello, hello. <laughs> this, is a, this is a special one. Yeah. Because it's a recording. We've got a cool little yeah. logo right over there by Carl's head yeah, as well. Uh, oh, uh, of, of, of a size, guys. Yeah. There. Uh, yes. There we are. Yay. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. Yeah, this uh, this week's episode is dedicated to Azure Back to School. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's recorded. And, and it's recorded yeah. because, you know, normally we talk about what have we been doing the past week. Mm-hmm. But Richard and myself, we're going to Experts Live on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. So we're yep. probably traveling on Thursday. We won't be here. So the question is, what are we doing the upcoming week? Yeah, well, for me, Sunday morning, my flight is at 6.05 in the morning. So oh, wow. I'm uh, going to be getting up really early Sunday morning, get to the airport for 4 a.m., get on that flight to Amsterdam, wait a couple of hours, get on a flight to Prague, and then finally be ready for Experts Live, which starts on the Monday, and we've got a bit on the Tuesday and the Wednesday, awesome. traveling back on the Thursday, getting home very, very late, nearly at midnight, and then uh, going to work the next day, which will be fun. Sounds real fun. You two are doing a celebrity book signing, if I recall correctly, right? Uh, A book signing? I'm not sure about the celebrity. Celebrity. (laughs) What what, what goes below Z by quite a long way? Oh, come on. We're not. (laughs) Yeah, we, we are signing some books. Yes. Yep. Sponsored by Intercept. Yes. Yes. Yep. Awesome. Yeah. And your week, Carl. I don't have to explain my week. It's going to be the same as Richard. It's pretty much Richard's the same week. as Richard. Well, yeah. well, my week will be. Well, I'm still. I was. I'm off on leave today and yesterday, and I'm off on leave all next week. So, I will probably be doing a bit of CKA study, um, good, if I can good. manage to get up early enough. Um and. Yeah, pretty much taking it easy, doing little to no tech aside from study. Um, nice. Maybe actually get round down on starting teams and outlook from my phone, like we talked about in the last show. So, yeah, and if you can hear me, I don't feel awesome right now. So hopefully, um, I don't sound like this for the entirety of the next week, or it will suck. Mm. But <laughs> hey, I'm I'm off work. I'm able to relax, spend time with the the kids, spend time with the wife. Just chill out. That that's probably why it's happened. Your body's like for oh, yeah. finally relax now because you're not at work. Mm. Let's go make yeah. you ill and relax. Yeah, <laughs> no, but that that's the thing, right? When you yeah. when it you happens all the time to me about to go on on annual leave or take a couple of days off. All of a sudden, you know, you're you're working really hard, doing all you can, and you know, hopefully, most of the time, enjoying it. But then you've got your days off, and then the first couple of days, headaches, colds, yeah. everything happens, and this is why you need like two to three weeks off. Yeah, yeah, you sure. got, you, and it's that time of the year the kids are just back at school, and you know, someone was going to get sick. It just happened to be me so far, so all good. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Um, but today's show is dedicated to uh, as you're back to school. Mm. Yeah. Do we want to talk what, a little bit about yeah. what it is? What it, yeah. What is Azure Back to School? I see Carl's got an actual T-shirt with the logo on as well. Yeah, yeah. he's I the only one. Properly I don't know where. Don't don't know where the camera is. So thanks to Dwayne Natwick for sending me this shirt, and he sent me one Captain Hyperscaler on it too, which is his cool. blog. And I think the yeah, I, I think the name of his blog is still Captain Hyperscaler. So I believe so. Yeah. yeah. Um, so he sent me that as part of the 40 for 40 that my wife was awesome enough to run for me when I was turning 40 um, recently. Um, but uh, back, <laughs> as you're back to school, originally um, dre- initiative dreamt up by doing that work himself, where it's like a, a month of uh, daily content across the, uh, as it says on the tin, across the Azure technology sphere. Um, in recent years, he's been joined um, by Derek Smith, um, in terms of organizing and you know because it's it's a, it's a big undertaking getting a month long um, 
initiative, a community initiative running with multiple pieces of content each day. I mean, Richard, you'll know about that from Fox of Tech, you know. Well, it's a so, initiative and it, it's awesome. Um, so we're we're happy, privileged to be able to uh, contribute. Um, so thanks to Ian, Eric. This is the fourth year it's been running. It started in 2020. Fourth. Now we're 20, yeah, fourth year. It's gone quick. I, I thought it was the third, but oh, the fourth. Yeah, That's no, some nice fourth. consistency right there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a good job, Dwayne. Yeah. yeah, it's pretty awesome. I mean, uh, I can't imagine having to deal with people sending in stuff late, pre recorded. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, Dwayne. You mean. <laughs> yeah. It was, it it was my fault. I, I'm taking the blame on this one. It was my fault. But uh, yeah. So. I think it's quite challenging and maybe even quite stressful to, you know, if you've got a whole month of stuff of people sending stuff in and you, you know, you have to deal with that and make sure it's on time, chasing people, scheduling it, posting it. I mean, especially if it's live, right? So you're relying on yeah. someone to do something at a specific time that you've allocated them. Yep. Or there's a, there's a hole in your schedule, you know, so it's, yep. yeah, it's stressful, I would bet. Because then you can't even get all the marketing material done until the day it's going live. And like when I do the festive tech calendar, some days I'm uploading the videos 30 minutes before it needs to go live because that person's just given it to me. Um, mm. So, yeah, even on Christmas Day, I've had to upload video content before as well uh, because it's been that delayed. But, you know, it comes with it. It's fun. And I'm sure Dwayne knows that pain. <laughs> but Dwayne... Doing a good job. Yes. Thanks, man. Captain Thank Hyper Sky. Contributing to the community like this. Mm. All right. And uh, we've prepared something for Azure yeah. Back to School. But before we do that, back to school. I know September, kids going back to school. Richard, you don't have to deal with that. Nope. For me and for Carl, it's probably a blessing. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> we got some time left now, but it's. Uh, no, no, it's, uh, you know, when was the last time you went back to school? A very long time ago. Not as long as Carl, I'm sure. Oh, I still. knew you were going to say that, but thanks. <laughs> yeah, Yes, for anybody that's watching and doesn't know, I'm old. Mm -hmm. 40. Already had 40, so it's like downhill. <laughs> downhill one, yeah. I have a thing. Yeah. I'm, like, I'm like 37 now. God. Jesus. It was like 20 years last time at school. Wow. That's like... I know I did, a, I did a bachelor's thing in the evenings like 10 years ago. What were you still, still That's still different though. Yeah. That's not school. That's higher. No. It was, yeah, it's just after work, you do some studying. But actually going back to school every single day with the bus and all that kind of stuff mm -hmm. that was 20 hey, years ago life was simpler back then 20 plus years ago for me but life was simpler so stay in school kids <laughs> <laughs> well oh, you end up like your... that, <laughs> that's probably the best advice we're gonna give yeah. today so yeah. we can probably end kids. it <laughs> Stay that's in our school, session complete. <laughs> that's it. No, no demo. Yeah. We just wanted to come here and say, stay in school. <laughs> All right. <laughs> hang, hang on, hang on. Stay uh, in school. <laughs> I think uh, <laughs> when, when we guys start chatting, it, it, it'll probably last two hours. Maybe we should just start and, uh, and move yeah. on with the demo and talk about the things <laughs> that we're actually going to talk about today. Yeah. Awesome. Um, yeah, so the uh, the session we uh, we put in was regarding Flux or the Flux capacitor and mainly mm -hmm. GitOps. Uh, we prepared a nice little demo around that. Back to the future themed. Awesome. I've got that shirt. Yeah, very cool like shirt it. from KubeCon Amsterdam. Yeah, you got the same yeah. shirt. I couldn't that... find it, so I got this one on, but yeah. Is that an Aquasec t-shirt, is it? It is, yeah. yes. Oh, yeah. And it was, um, I think Anise was nice enough to just give it to us. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Skipped all the marketing things and just got the t shirt. For sure. Which is great because it's a nice t shirt. It um, really is. 
Yeah, so today we're going to talk a little bit about GitOps and, um, and we're going to be using Flux V2 in Azure Kubernetes servers and we're going to configure it live. Well, recorded, but live. We don't do mm -hmm. additional live takes. We just do this in one take. For yeah. us, it's very live. And um, yeah. then we're just going to play with uh, little upgrades and downgrades and switching versions and see what happens. Yeah, some, yeah, some, might, call it, some. some might call it winging it. We call it just real. Having fun. It's having fun. That's what we're doing. It's having fun. Yeah. It's just doing it. It's like doing your job. It's like work. This is what we do at work every day. We don't prepare it a million times. We just configure it on the go. Obviously, I tested the demo earlier today, but <laughs> you know, we're just going to configure it and deploy it. Well, I mean, I can say we didn't test it, but. If you go to our Git history, you can see I tested it a couple of times. Mm -hmm. yeah. But uh, wh why on earth would we do GitOps at all? Is there mm, a reason to do question. it? Well, it could make your life easier. It could make your life more secure. Um, I'm sure there's many other reasons that Carl might want to jump in and say about. Yeah, so it's it's relying on your your Git repo for your your manifests and your customize and your your Helm charts and all the rest of it. So, I mean, if you look at opengitops.dev, that goes through a lot of principles around GitOps and what your GitOps functionality and implementation should be. It should be de declarative. I can't say that word. Declarative, it should be versioned and mutable. It should be pulled automatically and it should be continuously reconciled. So... Mm -hmm. <clears throat> what you'll see here today is is flux v2 is just one um project that operates GitOps. there's others like argo cd and, and 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 what have you they all function slightly differently so um what you see here for flux today won't necessarily be the same um for argo or, or for something else but the general principle is the same where your cluster it's it's a pull as opposed to a push um, scenario so your cluster or your flux agents are watching repositories for updates to manifest files as you'll see shortly or updates to git repos or github repos and then it reacts based on what you update so if you change an image version or you update an image or you add um, a service or a, a pod or application or whatever um, it will react and it'll It'll make it so. I mean, insert Captain Picard gif here. It it will just make it so, and that's uh, that's the continuous reconciliation piece, which is is pretty awesome. So you're not having to push changes to your Git repo and then and kick off a pipeline to push your changes in your uh, GitOps operator, your GitOps agents, or whatever, are consistently and constantly monitoring a Git repo for changes. Or multiple get repos in some scenarios, yeah. and it just pulls in the changes that you make. So, and pretty I awesome. Think because tech, of, right? Yeah, because of this pull method and this declarative nature, that's what brings that extra security in as well. Because you're not doing kubectl edit or kubectl apply like you would even be doing with your pipelines. You know, it is you. You have all the credentials on your cluster talking to your Git repository, rather than you having a cluster admin or something in your pipeline being able to deploy to it or your local yep. um, thing. So yeah, doing that really brings that extra security up. And because it's in Git, you have history as well. So you have that audit trail of what's being applied to the cluster. So if someone did go and break it, you can find out what happened and then do a post-mortem and stuff like that. So it's really cool. And I think um, it, it, it on top of that, um, I know a lot of people do you know, pipelines and you've got your repos and your pipelines and, and you could even do Helm and your Helm charge. And then from from the pipeline, you do a, a Helm upgrade or install or, or whatever you're doing, which is fine, which is great because then you're, you know, using Helm, you're using packaging, you're using versioning. But the whole concept with GitHub, GitOps and, and reconciliation is that you're going to prevent, if you configure it correctly, you're going to prevent, you know, the configuration drift now, something changes in the configuration, the whole reconciliation progress uh, process makes sure that on the cluster, the configuration is there. If you delete something on one end, it will be gone yep. on the cluster. If you mm -hmm. add something, it will be added to the cluster. 
And I think that, you know, with Argo CD and Flux and Flux V2 specifically, that's a really powerful way to make sure that everything you configure and you commit to your repository is actually configured inside the cluster. It's it's the source of truth, right? So if you have uh, yeah. if you have someone in in your cluster in kubectl, like you said, messing about, not mm-hmm. necessarily messing about, maybe diag- do running diagnostics and changing things on the fly, <clears throat> your uh, reconciliation will notice and I'll put it back yep. the way it is. Which so is cool. so with that yeah, it is awesome, and and maybe there's a bit of. Um, there's a bit of a, a change in thinking for how your your SREs and your your folks that have their hands on the clusters, or the whether you want people consistently with hands on the clusters is a completely different debate. But if people are in the weeds to um, diagnose and stuff and checking, you know, figuring out what's going wrong, there's a change in thinking there about how they manage the changes. In the end of the day, if they're gonna if they need to make a change, then they need to make the change in the source of truth, which is the Git repo. And not yep. not there and then by kubectl edit or um, kubectl apply and you know breaking out oh, breaking yeah. out vi or or whatever you know so <laughs> yeah and then getting stuck in vi um, yeah <laughs> that can happen but the good thing about flux and argo and all these GitOps things you can still use Helm and customize mm-hmm. with it as well it's not just manifest files so you can still bring your tooling you're used to and your Helm charts. Put it in your Git repository and control it that way as well, which is really nice. Yeah. Yeah. So it's not right. forcing you away away from anything, which is which is awesome. You know, you can still it's use the tech you're used step. to. Yeah. It's just the next step. That, that's yeah. what it is. Um. Let's start with a demo. Sure. Let's get your screen up. Here Let's we get go. The up. Oh, that was smooth. Oh, you you were yeah. hovering over that button. Uh, oh, I so was. <laughs> All right, so uh, before we do the demo, we're doing a Back to the Future theme story. And I just want to share what we had to go through to figure out the timeline. Because, yeah, we put in a nice thing in Session Eyes and we said, oh, Back to the Future, Flux Capacitor, because Flux and you know, the Flux Capacitor and Back to the Future, one, two, three, whatever. That timeline is complex. Mm-hmm. It's this is what we had to read through. I mean, this contains graphs of the Back to the Future timelines, you know, timeline one through eight, and then you scroll down, you've got an explanation of everything that ever happened in all the timelines. So um, the recording of this session is much, much less time (laughs) than the research we had to do. to get to just three simple versions of our application but hey i appreciate it. this this sort of nerdiness mm-hmm. this sort of nerdiness is awesome really i am is. this sort of this sort of track nerd so i mean this is this is awesome i want to know no, it is, everything it is awesome you know i mean it's great but i never knew the dates that biff stole the sports almanac from the top of my head and now i do so I feel my one day you're going to do a pub it. quiz and it's going to be one of the answers and you're going to, oh, oh, I knew the answer. Yes. <laughs> it's all because of this. Oh, we're going to do a pub quiz at some point and this one's going to come back. Yeah. Cheating. Sure. <laughs> all right. Let's get to work. <laughs> we're going to configure Flux V2 on Azure Kubernetes servers. Um, why Azure Kubernetes servers? Because it has it out of the box. We can and just as, as you're back to school, so you know, yeah, as you're back, and as, yeah. <laughs> so we're, we're deploying uh flux with the add on and not with yeah. the helm and stuff, okay? Yeah, cool. we're just gonna go do it through the Azure portal. Mind you, you can also do this through the Azure CLI. The documentation on this is very, very good, awesome. And this will just configure flux on your cluster and not just configure or deploy flux because. You know, deploying Flux V2, you can do it through the Helm chart, but then you also need to customize configuration. You need to point to the right repository. You need to do a lot of other things to get it up and running. But the Azure portal or Azure CLI will just ask you for the parameters and you're good to go. So before you start clicking, I know that... 
sometimes when you're using stuff that's off my with, sound cut um, out again oh my no, you're still there am i still here yeah you're you're all still oh, there God. i think wesley just yeah. can't hear us <laughs> Hold on. so maybe I'll, I'll ask you this question while wesley's figuring okay. out his tech problems yeah so Back. with with exactly. Cilium, I, I know I'm talking Cilium again, but with Cilium, um, if you're using the built-in Azure CNI version, you lose some functionality. So mm -hmm. with Flux V2 and the add-on version, do you lose any functionality here versus just installing it with, with Helm direct from the project, or is it pretty much like for like? So the only differences that i am aware of is you can't keep it as up to date because it's an azure managed add-on in, in a way it's an extension from them so they have to make it available to you uh, so there might be a version or something behind compared to where you would be um, right, okay. i'm not sure how it integrates with tools like flagger i've never tried that because you can do normal flux and flagger but it probably will do the same i okay. i don't know just curious. <clears throat> I don't know myself. I was just, I was just curious as if you lost any functionality running the Azure add-on version, um, like you no. did some others. It's just a little different. I'm back. My sound cut out. I don't know nice. why. I had that well, since yesterday. Dog. Since yesterday morning, yeah. I thought it was Carl's sound who cut out because I just. Saw it's it. always Carl, isn't it? So you know. Yeah. Um, no, it was me. It was me. Yeah. But um. To follow up on that question and the answer from Richard, um, we're going to create this live and I'll point some other stuff out that you might want to change if you do it manually or, you know. Sure. Um, so if you've got a Kubernetes cluster, you can simply just go to GitOps and you're going to click Create. And then we can create our GitOps configuration. So what we're going to do, as we said, is going to be Back to the Future themed. I'm going to call this a BTTF, and in prepping this, I messed this up a lot of times, like BFFT, BTTF, BFTF, I don't know. Back to the future. And what we want to do is deploy our stuff, and we want to reconcile our stuff into the BTTF namespace. Now, here you can define a scope, and you can, uh, and a scope pretty much means what do you want to give, what, what permissions do you want to give Flux? inside your cluster, where do you allow it to deploy? You can scope it to the namespace, which would be this namespace, or you can do it on a cluster level. Now, if you're doing it on AKS or if you're doing it on a namespace, let's say if you're doing it on a namespace scope, you need to modify some permissions inside of Kubernetes service account permissions to actually allow it to deploy all the things that you wanted to deploy. If you set it to cluster level permissions, which is best for the demo, that's what we're going to do. It can deploy anything, anywhere. But back to your question, Carl, in terms of do you miss functionality or does something change? It's not only keeping versions up to date or having the latest features. If you set it on a namespace level, you need to do some additional customized configuration inside your cluster. Um, but to keep it easy, we're just going for a cluster level permission here. Um, sure. So we named the configuration BTTF the namespace BTTF, and then we're just going to go clickety-click next, and we have to determine a source or define a source. Where do we get our Kubernetes configuration from, the parts, the services, what we want to deploy? Now, we have a Cloud Native Weekly repository I've, or a Cloud Native Weekly GitHub account, and I've created an Azure Back to School repository. This is where we're going to get our configuration from. Within this, you can see I've got a directory YAML and it contains the app and the service that we're going to be deploying. And we're just going to put that in here. This is the, the address or repository, the main branch, and it's public. If it's private, we need to configure some authentication settings, you know, inside the cluster or secret storing cluster, or just put it in here. Uh, but we don't have to do that. It's just public authentication or public. And just just a note on the private one, you could also do SSH as well. So it doesn't have to be HTTPS on the private one. It could be SSH and you can upload the keys and stuff like that. So yeah, that's quite cool. Awesome. Yeah. So for demo purposes, we're going to set the synchronization interval to one minute because we don't want to wait for 10 minutes. 
in mm-hmm. production, you probably don't want it to check every single minute. I mean, you can. It doesn't take a lot of resources, but you know, you know, yeah. when you when you mess something up, you wish you had sat one minute. But in general, <laughs> ten minutes should just be fine. We're just going to set it to one minute, and I'm just going next. And then we have to create our customization to tell, all right, where do you get? So within that repository, where do you get the configuration from? What are you going to reconcile? And how often are you going to do that? So we're going to set this to one minute as well. We're just going to leave this as customization one. And the path we saw in the repository was slash YAML. Go back here. We can see slash YAML. This contains our, our YAML files. Um, then we can choose the option to uh, enable prune. So if any objects are removed from the cluster, if they're removed from the repository, or when customization or GitHub's configuration is removed from the cluster, be sure that everything is being pruned. We're going to enable that. And we're going to enable the force feature, force to instruct the controller to cre- recreate resources if they can't be changed due to an immutable field. You have to be careful with that one, right? <laughs> Because some, I mean, fields are immutable for a reason. So what it will do is, um, you know, for instance, if a field cannot be changed because it's immutable, what it will do is delete the resource and recreate it. Mm. Which is that yep. if it, potential downtime. Yep. Yeah, which no one we'll wants in production. Changes. No. Yep. Yeah, we're going to click it anyway. Um, so we set everything to one minute. The prune one is important, though, because if you delete like the YAML file from the repository, it also means you will delete the configuration inside Kubernetes. Mm-hmm. If we talk about configuration drift in infrastructure as code, because essentially doing the whole YAML thing in Kubernetes is infrastructure as code, right? It's just infrastructure within Kubernetes. If you don't tick the box, you still risk having you know, having a configuration drift. So I'd recommend setting that. If you're unable to set that because of the way you deploy configuration, I mean, rethink the concepts of of GitOps Mm -hmm. and why you're doing it and adjust your configuration accordingly. Check out open GitOps at dev. Yes. All right, so we're going to save this. I'm going to go clickety-click next and click create. And now what we have to do is wait. YOLO. <laughs> yeah. We just YOLO deploy everything. So it's good for demos. Now it's, uh, it's just demos. YOLO, YOLO deployments for demos only. We should uh, yes. add a disclaimer. Yes. <laughs> yeah, so what's happening now is um, um, Azure is going to configure a Flux V2 within my Kubernetes cluster, within my Azure Kubernetes cluster. And then it's going to try and reconcile what we have deployed or what we have configured and commit it inside this repository, which is a service, which is of type load balancer. So we get a public IP, so we can connect to it. And an application, which is pulling an image from Azure Kubernetes, uh, Azure Container Registry, and is going to pull BTTF back to the future version V1. Now this can take a couple of minutes it can take a couple of seconds. Um, what we learned today is that if you do it outside of office hours in <laughs> West Europe, it's <laughs> much faster than if you do yep. it during office hours for some reason. Um, it's just a little bit less busy. But see, there you go. I did this morning. It took like 10 minutes, but right now hey. it doesn't. So uh, then if we go check out our cluster, we're going to get namespaces. Wait a little bit, and then we see that we have a BTTF namespace, which is 37 seconds old. So nice. we do a K get SVC, and then in the BTTF namespace, we can see we now have a BTTF service, which is like the YAML we just saw. Hang on, Let, let's a... just let's just appreciate how quick that is. But you yeah, deploy. No, no, it's, it's quick. It's very good. It's very cool. Um, I've got the deployment here, and then if we go back to um, to the configuration, it says it's compliant. Nice. 
So it, it even it, tells you when it was last updated as well, which is good yeah. to see. Yeah, it will tell you that. And um, whenever I make a change, it should only take one minute after my commit to get up in this case to to see uh, to update it. So I can click here and I can see that you know I've got some details here. This is where I got it from. The interval is one minute. Um, I can see my configuration objects, the customization, and the Git repository. I can double check my source, but obviously we're not going to change that because you don't. I mean, I would go as far as to say if you want to make any changes here, just deploy something new because mm -hmm. you're going then you're then going to reconcile from a different source. You probably don't want to do that. But uh, yeah, it's it's pretty straightforward out of the box. We're doing it from the path slash YAML, which is where YAML is. And you know, if we go back to our service and we check that IP address. We're going to copy that website. Oh, look at that. We got something up and running from the GitHub nice. repository. Nice. So now we are in the year 2001 and it's November the 12th. Yes. And we just traveled in I'm time. Not, I'm not sure about November 12th because that date is not specifically specified, but the Gray Sports Almanac in Back to the Future was released first in November 2001. Nice. So what happened? We have an almanac that has all the documentation for a couple of sports from 1950 to 2000. So what you would normally do is let's play some bets and let's look at the history and what are the chances that, you know, teams like the, um, the Miami Dolphins, the New York Giants, or the Seattle Seahawks, what they will win, and we can put in a bet. And, uh, you know, we've got our application. You know, we use the Sports Almanac. We use knowledge that was gathered in the past. See if we can place a bet. So our application works. But, uh, you know, we're going to deploy the next version of our application nice. because we're happy that it works but as developers and as ops people we always want to make progress we want to add value to our customers we're going to deploy the next version so what we have here is the app.yaml the one that is currently reconciled into the cluster that we've deployed and we've deployed version one and we prepared this so we've got a v2 as well so all we're going to do is change this to v2. And, and then what we're going to do, do this, we're going to git add, we're going to git commit, do version change, and we're going to do git origin main. And now we have added, and we're going to check in GitHub. Where is it? There it is. We're going to check in GitHub. And if we refresh this page, we can see that we pushed the next version into GitHub. Of oh, that sounds quick. Yeah, even with command line Git, right? It was still quick. Yeah. <laughs> so within a minute, Flux should go, hey, there's a drift. I've got something running in Kubernetes. I've got something in GitHub, but hey, that thing in GitHub is different, but that's my source. So I should pull all of that and then deploy it into Kubernetes. So that's something that should happen. And we can keep refreshing it and then see when it last reconciled. Um, what I'd like to do is just refresh the page of whatever I'm doing, but <laughs> all we can do is just refresh. Look at that. We have got the new version of our application, but you know, for the people who watched Back to the Future and specifically Back to the Future 2, something went wrong. On oh, October no. 21st in 2015, Biff noticed that Marty and the doctor came to the future and they had the DeLorean with the flux capacitor. Obviously, you need to mention flux capacitor in here, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Many times as possible. As many times, flux capacitor, flux capacitor, flux capacitor. <laughs> okay, so uh, so what happened is, uh, you know, Biff found, you know, the DeLorean, and as we know, in two thousand one, the Sports Almanac was released. So what Biff wanted to do is grab one of those copies, 
and go back to the past. Because mm-hmm. if you have all the knowledge of all the outcomes of all the big sports that you can bet on, obviously you want to go back to the past and you know, make some money. So that's yeah. what Biff did. Definitely would do the same. <laughs> I'd probably try and do the same, but uh, <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> well, well, it looks like it looks like young Biff has taken a bit of explaining to their look. Cause <laughs> yeah, yeah, like the brightest. Um, if Old I remember the right, he wasn't like very smart in the uh, movies. <laughs> no, that's true. That's it's been true. so many years since I've watched those movies. <laughs> yeah, it's been a while for me too. I think reading up on the whole thing probably refreshed my mind more than just watching yeah. the movie. Mm-hmm. But uh, he went back to 1955. So Old Biff went to visit Young Biff and give Young Biff the sports almanac and then potentially become rich. Nice. Now we deployed the next version of our application, and I mean, we all know that this is not a good idea. I mean, creating new timelines. That that's a problem, right? That can that's just going to lead to chaos. So uh, we're not really happy about that, and we are the fail forward kind of people. Mm-hmm. So we yep. develop something, and let's just go to version three. We're just going to do exactly the same thing. This was a problem. We don't want Biff to bring back the sports almanac, so we're going to. Version three, bad Biff, bad Biff, mm-hmm. bad Biff. So bad I save this and uh, we're gonna open our command line back up. We're going to do exactly the same thing. We're going to push a version change and push it again, and then hopefully within a minute or less. It checks every minute, so it could be within five seconds as well. Hopefully, we solve the problem with our next version. I'm just gonna keep refreshing. Oh wow, that was quick. Still updating now. This this is this is a cached image actually in the browser. Ah. If we wait a little bit, we'll see what's going to happen. But uh, there we go. Yeah. See, hey, it's still not good. Biff is rich. We're in 1959. Biff is rich, so he placed some bets, and uh, you know, bets are still open. His plan worked. His his plan worked. He's making. We need to save the. We need to save the timeline. Gents. Yeah, we definitely yeah. do. Yeah, so Where's here's Dr. the Strange thing. When you need them? This is why this is a problem, right? If Different franchise. To... Oh, sorry. <laughs> if we go back to this page, we can see that whatever is happening, this is a problem because um, at the end of the movie, we've got eight different timelines and we've got a ripple effect and, you know, the universe is going to collapse. We don't want that to happen. That's a big problem. But we're using Flux. We Hang can on. push new configuration. Are we saying that the Marvel Universe stole the idea of multiple timelines and the multiverse we of madness are. from from Back to the Future? Is that? Oh, hang on, but hang on. Hang which on. one came first? Which one came first? You're old. I think for legal reasons, we should probably not get into this. <laughs> probably wise. Probably wise. <laughs> <laughs> That's a very good question. This is a whole other show. I think, Carla, we could go down on yeah. this. Back to the Future and the Multiverse of Madness. I, I, yes. th- th- uh, we would have to start buying comic books on when Marvel hey. introduced the multiverse. Mm. I'm, I'm game. Let's do it. Yeah. Anyway, moving on. That, that, th- one more thing on that. That could make quite a good episode. <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> but yeah, maybe not. Um, <laughs> we we should have had Wesley dressing up as uh, Doctor Strange for this episode. <laughs> yeah. Why? And then me? I could have been Doc Brown. <laughs> you know. And yeah. Carl, you're the I could, I could have been o- old Biff. Yes. I... <laughs> Just uh, trim the beard a bit. Mate, I, yeah. I've Googled pictures of old Biff. You don't want this. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want it. Uh, All right, I don't have Marvel picture. stuff, though. Well, I've got some. I've got a sorting group from Harry Potter. I think that's a Groot you've got there. That's Harry uh, Marvel. Yeah, that's yeah, Marvel. Yeah. This is yeah. this is a Groot. Um, we've got yeah. one here as well. I've actually, I lost a magnet, but I've got a Groot on my desk. <laughs> <laughs> that's cool. All right, back to the future. Back on track. Oh, did you see what I did there? Yeah, it okay. was good. It was good. <laughs> so, back to the future. Um, we've got a very rich Biff. So we did a fill forward. This is not going the right way. It's only getting worse. 
So all we mm -hmm. can do is let's just go back to version V1 and just push our changes and just revert back to what we were doing in the first place. Um, we're going to do a git add again. We're going to do the version change and we're going to push our changes. <laughs> and then hopefully we'll end up with the original 2001 version and the sports almanac that we've had. Hang on, fingers crossed here. Hang on. So I uh, pushed it. I'm just wait, gonna, wait, did you actually have to uh, you know, press? Oh, wait, you <laughs> call. Oh, it down again. <laughs> Hold on, I can fix it. Uh oh, what happened? We're still rich, Biff. Just wait for the GitOps to kick through. Yeah, Wesley, I figured out again. a way to fix it. The sound. Nice. But, uh, Shinebrook. Yeah, it's working. So there we go. We have to wait for the image cache to clear. We're back. We're back to November yes. 12, 2001. That's cool. Back, back to version one. We've just saved all those timelines with a push of a commit. Yeah. And th this is the thing about GitOps. I mean, if you, you know, you're doing Helm, you're doing kubectl or whatever you're doing. If you make changes, you have to kubectl apply, you have to change this deployment, that deployment, and then you have to change this Helm chart and that Helm chart. When you're getting into bigger environments, more, as Carl likes to say it, more enterprise -y kind of environments, mm -hmm. <laughs> chances are big that you're changing a lot of different configuration files. If you have something like this happening, like the future is changing, everything is going wrong, and you know, version over version is just making it worse, you just revert your commits. Which is nice. And you're back to the version that you had. If you have to do it with Helm, I mean, yes, you can do Helm rollbacks and you can do other changes. You can use kubectl, but this is version control and change management. This, this, this is how you want to do it. You can actually look in GitHub to see which version you want to go back to, whereas with the Git rollbacks, yeah. you've got to try and remember which one to go back to and everything. I mean, yeah. even with, with pull requests, you can just click revert pull requests. And reverting mm -hmm. that pull request would end would result in a reconciliation of the previous version, which means everything is back up and running into the cluster. Which is awesome. So I guess because I know Carl's got to go shortly, um, and we need to probably wrap this up. So I guess what we're trying to say here is, Flux is awesome. It makes life Fantastic. so much easier. Perfect. Yep. And um, you can have fun with it and play Back to the Future, play Marvel and split all your deployments into different timelines and fix it all or yeah. something like that <laughs> and if you want to play with this with the same example the yaml version one version two version three it's all in our cloud native weekly github account in the azure back to school repository um so you probably can get started quickly yourself as well um awesome. just configure some flux into your cluster push the images and so good it. to go. Nice. Awesome. Yeah. Great demo. Awesome demo. I appreciate the amount fun. of re research that went into that. Yeah. Yeah, with a lot of reading. But uh, yeah, sorry <laughs> about the sound. It started happening yesterday. I don't know why that happened, but uh, I found that if I start playing a different sound, everything comes back. So I probably need to figure that out. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Right. So I guess with uh -huh. that, we should thank everyone for watching and thanks again to Dwayne and Derek for amazing Azure Back to School and for having yeah. us. And um, we'll be back to hopefully live the week after and we can tell you all about how Experts Live was and Carl can yeah. tell you what he did uh, on his week off. I <laughs> shall try my best. Yeah. Hopefully right. not be sick. So <laughs> <laughs> enjoy mm. Experts Live guys and uh, if you're watching this in the future, thanks for watching. Yeah. Thank you for watching. We'll keep you up to date. And with that, we're out. Bye-bye. Right. Thanks, everyone. Bye.